Hello people, today I'm going to be reviewing the new Anthony Hopkins movie, The Father. I watched this last night for the first time, and I was an emotional wreck. This is a very, extremely sad movie. For anyone out there who hasn't seen this movie yet, which I, I know it's a lot, this is really sad. <laughs> like, I am not the biggest crier. I know a lot of people cry really easily during, during movies. Like, heck, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Spoiler alert for Endgame, Iron Man has been my childhood hero. He was the superhero of my generation, and I didn't shed a tear when he died in Endgame. <laughs> so, the fact that this made me, that this movie made me, um, kind of ugly face cry, it was, when I mean it did that, it really did that. When I say it's emotional, I mean it's really, really emotional. So, getting that out of the way. Besides that, this is a fantastic movie and the best movie of 2020, without a doubt. Before the, for the longest time, my favorite movie of this year was Tenet, which I gave a 9.3, and so obviously this movie gets higher. And I was, when I started watching these um, awards movies, I was expecting almost every single one of them to beat it. But for some reason, nothing really beat Tenet for me. I'm not saying that the other movies like No My Land or Pieces of a Woman are bad movies, it's just that it didn't surpass Tenet when it came to my enjoyment of it. So yeah, the, and I know I have a higher opinion of Tenet than most people, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, this movie beat Tenet for me, and let's just get in with the small little nitpicks that I have with this movie. Um, and the the one of the two small little nitpicks I have with this movie is that there are still some unanswered questions in, at the end of this movie. You could kind of put the two and two together, but I would have preferred a certain, um, not plot point, but background information to be explored a little bit more. I know that's, I'm not saying what it is, but it's spoiler territory, but Anthony Hopkins talks a lot about a character throughout a movie, and we never see that certain character, but um, there's still, it's kind of vague exactly what that character is. <laughs> and I, and I know they explain the movie from his point of view, but what the movie did was it told, it told it from his point of view. He's not able to comprehend it, but as w the audience slowly pieces it all together and exactly what's happening happening i was expecting to get that i was really always looking forward through throughout the movie for this for a couple questions about a certain character to be answered and we did get kind of an answer but it was never as fleshed out as i wanted it to be and um speaking of piecing things together some of the stuff that we did piece together eventually towards the movie before they kind of revealed it i found it kind of obvious um and I saw a lot of it coming, though it's just a small nitpick and all of it was kind of good twists and turns anyways. But now let's get into what I really liked about this movie. Anthony Hopkins has better have the Oscar in the bag this year because he gave a fantastic performance. At the moment, I've been questioning, is this better than Science, Silence of the Lambs? Is he giving a better performance here? And right now I have to say the answer is yes. I think he beat his performance in Silence of the Lambs. I can't say that to 100% answer right now, but I know how I feel right now. I just saw the movie, so the, but they're very close, but I feel like the slight edge of for right now goes to this performance because the way that he sells the scenes, when I, um, when I cried, ugly face cried, it was all because of Anthony Hopkins um, acting, and he sold it so well. Um... And, and my favorite thing about this movie, even though I said some of the twists and turns were kind of obvious, is the storytelling from his point of view. I love how when he gets confused, we get confused. And so when Anthony Hopkins gets irritated or upset because of his dementia, you really feel exactly how upset he is. You know what it's like to be in his shoes, which makes it all the more sad because I feel so bad for his character the whole entire movie. And so you'll know what I mean when you guys get to the very last scene of the movie. It, I cannot express how sad this movie is. And nothing like and really intentionally sad happens. It's not like sad for being the, for the sakes of being sad. It's just almost, it's hard to explain. You'll know once I mean, once, I, once you see the movie. The movie, most of the time, my biggest problem I have with most Oscar movies is that they're just too long. Most of them, even though they are um, a slow, are, they're 
are slow burn movies. And this is a slow burn, but I it was always I was um always enjoying it. But like the other Oscar movies I've watched so far, so far like um Pieces of a Woman or Nomadland, they're both. No Man Land particularly is a very short movie, but I still thought it was a little too long. Pieces of Woman was a, Pieces of a Woman was a long movie and it definitely meant, definitely lost a little bit of runtime. But I think this one is the shortest out of the three, and I'll say they um perfect runtime, perfect. It's absolutely nothing could be um well maybe a little bit could be added, but besides that, everything about the runtime is perfect. And I think the best way to describe this movie is the Joker of 2020. Of course, it's not a slow des um, descent into madness. It's a slow descent into sadness. I like that quote. You know what? Just, just quote me on that, please, if you're if you're watching that. Put, put that on the Blu-ray. I really like what I just said. <laughs> so, yeah, I really, really love this movie. I'm going to give it a 9.6 out of 10. Best movie of the year. Tonight, I'll be watching The Trial of the Chicago 7 on Netflix. And, yeah. There's still a lot more Oscar content to go through. I always kind of go through all these Oscar movies in January. So, yeah. Um, I'll, if you, I'm, do my, um, immediate reactions on my Letterboxd account, which is Critic, Critic Kid, so go ahead and follow that. I know it's Critic, Critic Kid, it's just, I couldn't switch my name when my channel name used to be Kid Critic. I could, I, I can't switch it. So, unless if I want to pay 20, 20 bucks, and I, I, I don't want to do that. So, yeah. Anyways, that's my review for The Father, so like, share, subscribe, and stuff like that, and adios.